Sonic Superstars is the first 2D Sonic game in six years. Well, so long as you ignore Origins, a quarter of Frontiers, and like 80% of Forces, and we are. We definitely are. It's the first proper 2D Sonic game since the release of Sonic Mania in 2017. Considering how highly regarded Mania is, Superstars has quite a bit of pressure on it. It's not like Frontiers, where the previous 3D game was Forces, which I can safely say was a game. In the history of video games, Sonic Forces was certainly one of them. Because of that, Frontiers didn't have much to live up to. Also, it completely changed gameplay style, and while Superstars has changed to a 2.5D approach, the gameplay is still classic Sonic. Well, the game recently released, so let's take a look at it. First things first, I may as well talk about the story, because this is a 2D Sonic game, so it should be pretty simple. The game takes place mainly on the North Star Islands, which are home to these giant animals. I mean, look at these. That's a big boy right there. The large animals are of interest to Dr. Eggman, as he sees an opportunity to turn these massive creatures into badniks. He enlists the help of Fang the Hunter slash Fang the Sniper slash Nat the Weasel, why does he have so many names, who has managed to scratch and claw his way out of Sega Purgatory because the last time we saw him was in Sonic the Fighters which was 27 years ago. No, I'm not counting Mania because that wasn't actually him. Eggman also has the help of a native of the islands, Trip, who as her name suggests, is a total klutz. She's just kinda there to help the villains find their way across the islands. Obviously, this plan of turning animals into badniks doesn't rub the good guys the right way, so Sonic, along with Tails, Knuckles and Amy, set out to stop the Doctor by freeing the animals already captured by him. Whilst travelling across the islands, Fang, along with Trip, attempt to stop the heroes by various methods. They don't work though, because Trip's very clumsy and she's not very good at this whole evil thing, which leads to Fang berating her often. At one point, Trip falls down a trapdoor that was set up to trap the heroes, which leads to her meeting Amy, who offers help to her. After a couple more zones, Knuckles finds the Chaos Emeralds, but Fang swiftly intervenes to steal them off him. This leads to the heroes going face to face with Fang in a boss fight that can absolutely... Uh, I'll talk about it later. After defeating Fang, Trip grabs the emeralds and uses them to turn into a dragon What? She takes out Fang and Amy introduces her to the team. After a few more zones of freeing animals, the team uses eggmobiles constructed by Tails to travel to the Egg Fortress which may as well be another death egg at this point. The heroes wreak havoc throughout the fortress until Eggman reverses time somehow to reverse the damage, but they end up taking him out anyway and destroying the Egg Fortress so that was a bit pointless wasn't it round man? After taking care of Eggman, the team uses an Eggmobile to depart the exploding fortress, and everyone is happy. Until a massive dragon comes out of nowhere to attack the islands. Okay, I'm a fan of your usual supersonic boss fight. Hell, I did an entire video covering every single one of them, but this has to be the most out of nowhere final boss in all of Sonic. Okay, it doesn't come completely out of nowhere. Eggman is aware it exists since he has his really bad drawing of it at the start of the game, and Knuckles finds a mural depicting it when he finds the emeralds, but there is nowhere near enough foreshadowing for this thing. There's not even a reason given why it shows up. It just does. Anyway, Sonic takes care of it and Trip helps by sealing it into a gemstone. That's the end of the game. This is a 2D Sonic story, so it's pretty basic. There's not much to talk about other than the dragon coming out of nowhere. The story's fine, but how's the gameplay? Sonic Superstars is a 2D Sonic game. That may sound obvious, but it's the best explanation. Sonic and the gang all accelerate, decelerate, and jump in exactly the same way as the classics. There may be some opposition to that, but people have done tests, it's exactly the same. Any difference can probably be attributed to the game being a 2.5D now. And speaking of it being a 2.5D, this game looks fine, but I don't know, something just feels missing. It's colourful and everything, nothing here looks bad, I just can't explain what isn't working for me. Granted, I have a bit of a bias against 2.5D games. I much prefer full 2D games with sprites. I know why they changed to 2.5D, it's much more casual friendly and the game is more likely to sell more because of it, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Another thing I'm extremely mixed on is the music. When are they going to stop trying to emulate the Genesis slash Mega Drive sound? I just think it's limiting the composers at this point because some of these tracks just aren't good. There are some tracks I do like though, such as Pinball Carnival Act 1. Lagoon City Act 2 Sand Sanctuary and Egg Fortress Act 2 I don't think the soundtrack as a whole is terrible, but it sure is disappointing. Since we're talking about the stage's music, how are the stages themselves? Whilst it's great that every level here is original, I think some of these levels are a bit safe in their aesthetics. The level design, however, I think is pretty good. The stages are large and expansive, and there are many different paths you can take through levels which make repeat playthroughs fun. It can definitely be a bit slower than your typical Sonic stage at points, especially later in the game, but I don't mind it. Going into the game, I'd heard some people saying that the game started good, but dropped off in later stages. Personally, I don't really see that. The game definitely gets harder later on, but I expect that. 
The only real zone that I didn't like was Press Factory. This stage is just annoying. It's too focused on its gimmicks to have any sort of fun, especially Act 1, where you're just trying to go fast and are interrupted by... Yeah, that. This game quite likes its gimmicks, actually. We have the grinding and dark sections in Speed Jungle, the pinball in Pinball Carnival, all the nonsense in Press Factory, the squid and mouse thing in Cyber Station, the shooting section in Frozen Base, and the reverse time thing in Egg Fortress. Some of them I can do without, but they're fine for the most part. Another sort of gimmick in this game is the Emerald Powers. Much like Sonic 3, you can find giant rings across the level which take you to a special stage where you can earn an emerald. These stages are fine. The swinging can be a bit awkward sometimes, but catching the emerald shouldn't be awful. The only stage that gave me trouble was the fifth one. Instead of only getting a reward for collecting all the emeralds, each individual emerald you collect unlocks a power. This is an interesting concept, but not all the powers are that useful. Ivy and Water can open up some interesting options for level design, but they require you to stop in your tracks, and in Water's case, it's pretty useless when there's no waterfall. Vision isn't great either, since all it does is uncover some extra platforms and rings, which isn't really that useful. Slow allows you to slow time and is useful for any difficult platforming. It's pretty cool, but not really a game changer. Extra allows you to perform a new attack depending on who you're playing as, but I don't really see the point because jumping on enemies works just fine. The most useful ones by far are Bullet, which allows you to dash in the air and makes any difficult platforming a non-issue, and Avatar, which summons clones that can attack enemies. These powers could definitely be more useful, but at least they make some of these bosses a hell of a lot easier. These things are awful some of the worst in the whole series. They take way too long. I swear some of them are longer than the stages you go through to get to them. There's nothing more frustrating than getting right to the end of a fight only to die and have to go through the entire 5-10 to 10 minute fight all over again. They aren't even that varied either. Each boss only has like 2 or 3 attacks, but you have to wait so long between hits. Fang's gotta be one of the worst ones. Three stages split up by auto-scrolling sections that just aren't fun. The final boss is also a pain. 12 hits. Two stages. They can last about 10 minutes. Just a really miserable time. Uh, at least when you beat the final boss of the main story, you unlock the ability to play as Trip as well as the new story. Trip's story. This is one of the worst things they put in a Sonic game. Trip's great, right? I think she's a great addition to the team and her moveset is fun. She has a double jump and can stick to water to traverse them. That's really cool. What's not really cool is the level design in her story. Trip's story consists of Trip going through every level of the main story only with level design more tailored to her moveset. I know I had to beat the game to get to this point, but that is no excuse for some of the worst level design and enemy placement I have seen in a 2D Sonic game. There are spikes everywhere, enemies can snipe you from off screen, and pits like to show it when you really don't want them to. They even made the bosses last even longer, and the final boss of this story is one of the worst I've ever played. Hey, it's Fang again and he's being a dick! He has not one, but two insta-kill attacks, and if there's one thing I absolutely hate in boss fights, it's insta-kill attacks. This fight is two stages and both can last about five minutes. Nothing is more frustrating than getting to the end of the boss and getting thrown towards a screen or insta-killed by these things or getting headbutted out of nowhere. Fang, you were missing from games for 27 years, please go back to being missing! The biggest indictment I can give to Trip's story is that I thought the one thing that you shouldn't think when playing a video game. When does this end? It was a complete slog completing this thing, and the worst thing is you have to complete it to get to the true final boss, which is also awful. Not only does Barney the Dinosaur over here come out of nowhere, but his boss fight mostly consists of watching him do stuff whilst your ring count depletes. You control exactly like the super fight in Mania, only this time the only way you're collecting enough rings to stay alive is to rely on your friends air dropping them in. You also get more rings if you overlap them, and that's really helpful and everything, but sometimes they show up in the middle of a transition so you can't collect the rings. Oh, and why not? Let's throw in an insta-kill attack in the first phase because we're Arzest and we don't know how to make good boss fights. Also, it doesn't make much sense to me why you can only play as Sonic in this boss. This game prides itself with its multiplayer, and yet Sonic's the only one who can save the day. I don't know what got into the development team here because we were on track to a pretty good game with the main story. It's not perfect, and it's definitely not as good as Mania since the level design is a bit slower, but it's a game that I could go back to and enjoy. Everything afterwards is just a miserable slog that is genuinely unpleasant to play. I'm really torn about this game. I mostly enjoy it, but the things that annoy me, really annoy me. The bosses, Trip's story, some of the music. I'd like to say I can ignore them and focus on the good stuff, but Trip's story takes up about half of this game, and yet again, it's mandatory for the real ending, so no, I can't ignore it. It may seem like I'm complaining a lot, but I do still think it is a good game. Is it a game worthy of being sold at full price? No. And now that I say that out loud, it makes me realise that they probably added Trip's story just to pad out the game so you wouldn't be paying full price for something you can beat in about four hours. I do like the new inclusions, the Chaos Emerald powers should be a thing for future games, since I think they can open up more options for level design if done better. And Trip's great, I hope we see her in future games and that she doesn't get Marine the Raccoon. Also, multiplayer is a great idea, but there's no real excuse for it not being online in this day and age. The online battle mode seems fine, but I also don't really care for it. I'm not playing a 2D Sonic game for this sort of stuff. Keep building on the things on this game please, and if it's RZS who's going to be making 2D Sonic in the future, 
Please get someone else to work on the bosses for the love of God. Us Sonic fans have been busy recently, what with Superstars and the Last Frontiers update, and if you want to see what I think of that update, here's a video where I talk about just that, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want. I hope you have a great day, and see ya.